Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this new uh, seminar. So today I'm delighted to introduce um, Ana Hilario. So Ana is a researcher at the University of Aveiro in Portugal. Uh, she's a deep sea ecologist uh, working um, more specifically on life history traits and reproductive ecology of deep sea species, uh, but also looking into population connectivity, larval dispersal, and, um, and the implications for biogeography in general in the deep, and I think especially in chemosynthetic based ecosystem. Uh, so Anna holds a PhD from the University of Southampton, where I was lucky to meet her years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> glad that we're both here today. Um, and she's also um, largely involved in the international, international networks like DOZI or INDEEP. And today she's here to uh, present a, a large program uh, called Challenger 150, uh, which is a 10 year program uh, in the framework of the UN uh, Ocean Decades. So thank you, Anna, for talking to us today. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Marjolaine. Uh, hello, everyone. It's, it's nice to see all these familiar faces. Um, thank you for inviting me to, to present Challenger 150. So I'm not really going to talk about ridge, ridges or ridge systems or my work on ridges. Um, but um, this, this program, Challenger 150, was recently endorsed um, as a program of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And uh, although it's, it's me who is here today, and, uh, and although the project is co-led by Kerry Howell from the University of Plymouth, uh, and myself, this uh, this program is a truly collaborative effort, and um, uh, I knew something was going to happen. It's not passing. Ah, there we go. Um, and and this and this is the first message that I really want to to pass along uh, is that Challenger 150 is a collaborative effort. Um, it's not my project. It's not Kerry project. It's not Anna Colasso's project. It's really, everyone who wants to join a program. And um, adding, adding to this uh, collaborative nature, um, we can also think of Challenger as a, a legacy of the census of marine life. Um, some of you may be too young to remember the census, um, but the census was an international effort that took place between 2000 and 2010, uh, and that aimed to assess the diversity, distribution, and um, abundance of, of, of marine life. And, and its achievements were, were immense. Uh, for example, OBIS, the Ocean Biogeographic Information System, is a, is a result of, um, of the census of marine life. Uh, it's difficult for us today to imagine uh, that OBI didn't exist at some point, but it didn't, and it wasn't that, that long ago. Um, but I think that perhaps uh, most importantly is that the census built um, individual, institutional, national, and also at regional level uh, capacity. Uh, and I myself, and I'm sure some of you there as well, uh, grew up academically under the, under the census of marine life and all parts of, I do all parts of my career to, to, that, to that program. And in this sense, I, I believe, and lots of us believe that the deep sea community um, identifies more and, and appreciates more the needs and the value of these global cooperative endeavors. Uh, and they've, since, since the census, uh, continuously try to, to work together uh, towards similar goals, particularly through, through the INDIP, which was a network for coordinating and communicating deep sea science globally, and, and more recently through DOSI, the Deep Ocean Stewardship Initiative that aims to advise ecosystem-based management of resource uses in the deep ocean. Um, this, the community has, has, has tried to, to continue to build on, on, on cooperation. Um, and although this, these programs really uh, moved the science uh, and achieved a huge amount in the last 10 years, um, many, many different people uh, and in different fora, which is interesting, have talked about a new 10-year global program to sample the, the deep sea. Uh, and they've tried to, to do something like the census again. And, and in 2015, 
um, we started talking how to move forward. And um, it's really funny because these were different groups of people in different places at the same time, having, having, the, same, having the same idea. Um, so we started talking about this in 2015 and in 2017, the opportunity came uh, when the United Nations proclaimed the, the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. Uh, this decade is to be held from now to 2030. And, and the idea is that it will support a, a common uh, framework to ensure that uh, ocean science can support countries' actions to sustainable manage the, the oceans and to, and to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And immediately after the decade was, was um, proclaimed, the, the deep sea biology community started working towards a, a global collaborative program for the decade. Um, still in 2017, a working group was formed within DOSI. Um, SCORE funded another working group to develop a, a roadmap for a standardized global approach. Um, several talks were held, for instance, on technology development access. And finally, last year, we we formed Challenger 150, which was a result of, of, all, of all these efforts. And just early this month, uh, the Challenger was endorsed by the IUC, UNESCO, as an official program of the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. And what, what exactly is, is, is that decade? Um, this comes straight from the, the implementation plan of the decade. And the architects of this decade laid out um, the outcomes that the decade hopes to achieve. Uh, essentially, the, the, the purpose is to move us from the ocean we have to the ocean we want. And this ocean we want is a clean, healthy, productive, predicted ocean, at the same time as a safe ocean, accessible, and an inspiring and engaging and engaging ocean. And um, the way we will move or that is envisaged that we move from the ocean we have to the ocean we want is through science. Uh, and this science is built uh, around three or four objectives. I'm telling you three or four because this has been an evolving process through the last three years. And it's, this is also um, the beauty of this decade is that it's thought to be adaptive <clears throat> and to respond to new challenges that we may face in the, in the next 10 years and that we are expecting uh, to face. Um, so having read uh, the roadmap and how, and how the deep sea features in it, um, a group of, of people looked at uh, quick questions in, in, in deep sea science um, that have been identified through various fora previously in the last 10 years. And, and we realized that there are still quite a few questions uh, in deep sea science, particularly in deep sea biology that we haven't cracked yet. Um, so what we did was basically, we looked at the objectives of the ocean decade with a deep sea lens and, and mapped uh, deep sea biology, gaps in knowledge and requirements on to the decade objectives and societal outcomes. And so we drew up a, a blueprint to a, an ocean decade program to study deep sea life. Um, and so in, in, in this way, we move from the deep ocean we have with these various challenges that are faced by the deep ocean ecosystems and particularly human use of those ecosystems to the deep ocean we want, which aligns with the, with the overall decade outcomes of a clean, healthy, resilient, productive and inspiring ocean. And, and we do this via the same four objectives, which are um, capacity building, generating new ocean data, building ocean understanding, which basically brings data into modeling and, and looks at the ecosystem uh, function and these sorts of questions, and then moving uh, into that objective four, which is about um, increasing uh, the use of ocean knowledge to taking that new knowledge into the policy arena. So this is basically the same scheme I showed you before, but if we look at it through a deep sea lens, we, we are looking at what might be a 10 year program to study uh, deep sea life. 
And uh, a big part of this program is the collection of, of new data, is that component of generating uh, new data. And um, as part of, of, of this, um, we also uh, considered what a global scale field program might look like. How might we go about filling the gaps that we already identified? Or where are more gaps? Or how, how would we want to design such a global program? How would it look like? What advice can we provide to people that might want to contribute either to its design or to the overall field effort? And so uh, late last year, there was a, another, another paper published that dealt uh, specifically uh, with, the field, with the field program. And, and again, this is just a blueprint um, of what such a global field program might look like, how it might work, and what might be the rules and standards that we can provide that might help people to, to contribute. And this is really what Challenger 150 is. It's a, a, a global cooperative uh, that aims to deliver the science we need to sustainably manage the, the deep ocean. Um, we want to see Challenge 150 is a, as a vehicle for coordination of deep sea research globally um, towards a set of common objectives. And, and those objectives have been already set out by the, by the United Nations, but adapted for uh, deep sea research and the community needs. Um, so our idea is that the program will be uh, operated or realized through different individual research projects. So each research pro project will commit to align to the program. And in doing so, it becomes a, a, a piece of a larger global jigsaw puzzle. And, and this was the only way we could envisage such uh, a global scale initiative. So people can work in individual projects, seeking their own funding, addressing their own questions, but where possible aligning with this overall set of objectives globally. Uh, and this is where the, where the endorsement by the United Nations becomes very important because the decade itself uh, is not a funding mechanism, uh, but, but, um, but it includes mechanisms and opportunities to increase funding and to bring together resource providers. So we can use this stamp to look uh, for funding and, and, and resource providers to develop our own individual projects that then contribute to this global uh, jigsaw puzzle. Um, to, to give you an idea of, of how the program we will operate and how, how we think we can try as a community to achieve these objectives, I'm just going to give you um, a couple of, of, of examples of where we already have uh, things, uh, things in place under those four objectives that, that were listed before. So under objective one, which was capacity development and knowledge uh, sharing, uh, one of the things that we've all recognized, and I'm sure we all in the room know, um, is that deep sea research, research is very focused in certain nations and in certain parts of the world. And this immediately leads to a bias in data collection. So we need to broaden, broaden up that knowledge base. Um, and one of the ways we can do that is by offering the opportunity and by coordinating what opportunities are out there to ensure that we are doing what we can do to help broaden that base, that knowledge base collectively. Um, and one of the things that we'll be doing under, under this, this aspect um, is, working in, is working in partnership with, um, with Revolution. Uh, in what we called the, the deep ocean training expedition, the, the DOT expeditions. Um, and these are aimed at building long-term capacity for developing nation, but also early career scientists. And um, the REV, REV has committed to fund 18 days of ship time every year for this purpose. Uh, when the vessel is ready, uh, we were supposed to start already next year. But uh, since there's been a, a delay in the building of the, of the vessel, this will start once the, the vessel um, is uh, operating. But we can use this same model with other vessels. Um, 
and uh, the this is based on a, on a previous model from the UNESCO called the training through research program some of us have participated in this and um, the aim here is to empower scientists from developing nations to engage in deep sea research but at the same time because we are doing research during the training we also expand our knowledge of deep sea ecosystems in poor known regions particularly EZs of developed nations or ICs where we know that there are huge uh, data gaps. Um, an important aspect of, of the decade is that the science and its results should be co-designed and, and co-delivered um, and that's really to, to ensure that the science is meeting the, the user need. Uh, and to this end, uh, uh, we already organized, we are organized in regional science committees um, that are based on uh, ocean basins and ecological knowledge um, that bring together scientists from the region, deep sea scientists working in the region, and also relevant regional stakeholders. Uh, and the aim of these committees is to ensure that there is a, a good communication locally with about what research has been done already and what research needs to be carried out to meet regional science needs. Um, the community established 12 regional scientific research committees that you, we can see here in this map. Um, and each of these, of, of, of these committees um, is um, is chaired, is co-chaired by one, one senior scientist and one early career researcher. And these chair positions will rotate every year to ensure um, representation from different countries, different career stages, and, and, and so on. Um, moving to objective, objective two, which is the to generate ocean data, which is perhaps the most important for us as scientists, and therefore it's it's a really big part of, of, the, of the program. Um, here, our aim is to operate, as I told you already, in all ocean basins and to fill the data gaps that have been identified by numerous studies before. Um, we know that not only there is less data at the greater depth, as there are also some parts of, of the world, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, where there are huge data gaps. And uh, I call the attention to the rich scientists here because there's a, a huge lack of knowledge in the Southern Hemisphere on, on rich systems and, and, and processes. And um, what that means basically is that our understanding of, of deep sea ecosystems is currently very biased, uh, which is not at all useful if, we, if we're trying to understand uh, systems and, and develop, and develop models. So we do need to fill uh, these data gaps. And to this end, uh, the Schmidt Ocean Institute uh, is a very important partner as they agreed to come uh, into collaboration with the program and they've committed their nine research cruises over the next couple of years to contribute data and knowledge um, to, this, to this effort. Apart from the, the cruises, uh, on board Falker from, from the Schmidt, um, eight cruises under the banner of Challenger 150 um, are planned for this year. They're, they're these little dots on this map. These are the cruises under the flag of Challenger 150 occurring this year. One is currently going on on the, on the, on the Phoenix Islands, but there's uh, several more in this, and this is really, um, fantastic because um, people have, have put an effort in, in collaborating in, in, several, in several ways and, and one of them is on um, um, standardization on how we can collect data that is more comparable between individual projects so, just, so that at the end, at the end of this, this year, at the end of the next 10 years, we can put our data sets together and, and tell, uh, be able to tell much more about the global uh, deep ocean. And on, on, this, on this topic of, um, of standardization uh, of, met of, of uh, methods, um, there's been a lot done 
uh, by different people in different fora, namely um, in GOOS, which is the Global Ocean Observing System and, and its uh, deep sea branch tools, but uh, also several publications have, have dealt with the issue of needing to generate more consistent data sets. And we, we are not trying to reinvent the wheel, um, but we will put quite a, a bit of effort in trying to standardize methods. And for that, we are in the process of forming um, technical, technical scientific or research committees uh, that will deal with different aspects of data collections. Uh, for example, there'll be um, a technical meeting on uh, megafauna image analysis that will meet for the first time next month. So if you, if you are interested, um, please contact Kerry, Kerry Howell. Um, we also have more information about this in, in our website soon. But just so you have an idea that there'll be a, um, a coordination effort here so that we don't reach yet another 10 years without having comparable uh, data sets. Under, under objective, objective three, which was building ocean understanding, Again, there's here a, a huge amount of value to be added from coordination, cooperation, and, and strategic uh, targeting. Um, for example, we will coordinate to ensure that we replicate uh, experimental setups in, in multiple ocean uh, basins um, in order to, to have a, a more holistic picture of how the deep ocean works and how it responds to things like, for example, climate change, um, we will also collectively agree to sample particular taxa. Uh, if we do this, we can produce uh, much more extensive data sets of species for things like population genetics, or we can, um, we can better develop uh, our understanding of connectivity, for example, which is really important to sustainable management and, and conservation. So there's, a, there's a, an important coordinating role here. Uh, that we are willing to assume, and there's also strategic targeting of efforts in order to achieve more between multiple multiple projects. Um, also, uh, standardized methodologies and, and coordination of data collection will start to provide uh, global data sets that are suitable for modeling and prediction, which, as you all know, is, is very important to decision decision making. Making, so we aim that by the end of the de decade, we are able to, to make uh, more robust spatial and, and temporal predictions in order to advise uh, uh, decision-making. Moving, moving on to, to objective four, which was uh, increasing um, utilization of, of, of knowledge. This is, this is basically the whole point of, of the decade uh, to inform sustainable management. management. So we, we need good pathways to take that scientific knowledge into policy and decision-making. And um, those have been really, really successful in doing this through different working groups, but we will also try to explore uh, different activities to establish these pathways between science and then users of science to ensure that uh, we are informing the way the deep sea is used and how, and how that policy should evolve. Um, and finally, um, lots of people ask us why we are called Challenger 150 or why we decided to call this program Challenger 50. And um, we are celebrating the 105th anniversary of the Challenger expedition. Um, and we, we cannot forget the importance of that first global deep sea biological data set that for some parts of the ocean remains the only data available, uh, which is a reason to celebrate uh, this uh, expedition in this first endeavor. Um, but we cannot fail to acknowledge uh, that the first challenge was, uh, as you can see in this picture, all white, all male, and took place in a time of uh, repression that was perpetrated largely by Western European nations. And um, deep sea biology has progressed in that sense, but um, we feel as a community that the rate 
has changed is changing very slowly. Um, many groups are still underrepresented in deep sea biology, and there's a huge gap in access uh, to the deep sea between developed and developing countries. So our final message is really one of giving a, a face of inclusivity and equal access to this historic name um, and, and, and the representative and equitable access to, to deep sea research. And that is basically what I have to tell you about, about Challenger. Um, our website, although not totally finished, is live now. Uh, challenge150.world, you can email us um, into a general email, info at challenge150.world, you can follow us in Twitter, and um, I welcome you all to join into, into what we expect is going to be a, a really uh, fruitful collaboration for global data collection in, in the deep sea, and thank you. <laughs>